Hey, blessed Lord's Day to you. On this second Sunday of Easter, also known traditionally as Quasimodo Geniti, from the first words of the intro at for today, in Latin, Quasimodo, Quasimodo Geniti Infantes, as newborn infants. And welcome to visitors who have joined us. We pray that your worship with us is blessed as our God comes to us to bless us with his gifts through his means of grace. And this is the second Easter Sunday of seven in this Easter season. And in the church, as was said last week, we regard every Sunday, every Lord's Day, as a little Easter. We follow an adapted and abridged divine service setting one, beginning on page 151 in Lutheran service book, and our hymn of invocation, hymn 467, Awake My Heart with Gladness.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, 
save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for the second Sunday of Easter is from the book of Acts, the fifth chapter. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days Theudas rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, 
you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they had called the, in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day, in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Peter, the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. 
Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it into my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Hallelujah. 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Apostle and Evangelist St. John takes us back briefly to that first Easter evening, the beginning of the Feast of the Resurrection of our Lord. He tells us that the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. It was the third day since their beloved Lord, their rabbi, Jesus, had been crucified, dead and buried. They were living in fear. It could be asked, though, is that really living? For the disciples were fearing arrest, intimidation, prison, persecution, and death, fearing for their lives. How long would they be forced to live in fear? How long could they live like that? In their hearts and minds, those three days must have seemed to stretch into weeks. Even though early on that first day of the week, the women had gone to the tomb, and even though they had been told, he is not here, he is risen, just as he said. And they had told the disciples. And even though Peter and John had seen the empty grave clothes in the tomb, still the disciples did not understand. John says of himself that he went into the tomb and he saw and believed. Still, they did not let these facts, especially the word of truth proclaimed by the angel, fill them with comfort, hope, or joy, or understanding. It was not until Jesus came and stood among them and showed them his hands and his side that John reports then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. You know, we're glad doesn't seem quite strong enough to describe their reaction. They rejoiced seeing the Lord. St. Luke says, they yet were disbelieving from joy and marveling, filled with wonder at the sight. Now there had been one of the disciples, not with the others, when Jesus came to them. They told Thomas, we have seen the Lord. Now, the punctuation in our English Bible translations is not inspired. But I can't accept a period at the end of that sentence. Wouldn't you put an exclamation point on that if you had seen the risen Jesus? We have seen the Lord! Still, as certain as they were of what they had seen, Thomas was just as certain, not really in doubt, but in his unbelief. Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and can put my finger in them and can put my hand in his side. Here Thomas uses a double negative. Bad grammar in English, but perhaps best rendered, I ain't never gonna believe. We have traditionally called him Doubting Thomas. And yet Thomas does not say he has doubts. Nor is this how Jesus would describe his disciples' mind and spirit. He says, I will not ever believe. We cannot really blame him either. For those three days... How many of the disciples believed that Jesus was victorious and had entered into his glory? Not a single one of them. They were all fearful and forlorn. The three days must have made those three years they followed Jesus feel so long ago. Perhaps as though they had walked with him for only three days and the fear and darkness since his death were three years long. How long will this go on? Some of the Psalms surely came to mind. My soul also is greatly troubled, but you, O Lord, how long? How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long, Lord, will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? O Lord, God of hosts, how long will you be angry against the prayer of your people? 
Return, O Lord, how long? And have compassion on your servants. Do you understand their sense of despair? Their loss of hope? Lately, we have gained some understanding of this. There has been, no doubt, an increased fear of sickness and death. Though, of course, this will never leave us in this life until we finally succumb to death or until Jesus comes again. Many know the increased fear and loss of hope from loss of employment, a job, a career, a vocation you have worked for years to develop. Gone like that. From loss of the business on which you spent your life savings to start and grow. The shop or farm that's been in the family for generations, where long-time employees are family. And you're dumping milk, plowing under crops, or wondering not just when, but if you'll be able to reopen. How long, O oh Lord, how long? When Jesus first called the disciples, these twelve Jesus sent out with authority to cast out unclean spirits, to heal, to proclaim the nearness of the kingdom of heaven, and to be his witnesses before governors and kings and the Gentiles. Just as Peter and John and the other apostles testified before the council in our first reading from Acts. Jesus, indeed, had compassion on his servants, his friends, his brothers. Answering that prayer from Psalm 90, Return, O Lord. Oh, yes, he did. Returning from the dead. How long? On the third day. And to remain alive forever, never to die again. Ten of the twelve, now eleven, had been there in that locked room and had seen the crucified Jesus, now resurrected, risen from the dead. They were to be witnesses of his resurrection and eyewitnesses of his majesty. And so they were. But Thomas was also to be one of those eyewitnesses. Clearly, he understood that. But how could, could he be such a witness unless he saw the risen Christ? How long, O oh Lord, must I wait until I see and can be what you have called and sent me to be, your witness, your eyewitness? Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked again, no longer for fear of the Jews, but so that Thomas might behold Jesus' power and glory with his own eyes when Jesus came and stood among them. The seven days signifies the original creation. Now we have the eighth day, and the eighth day marks the new creation, the new heavens and new earth, begun in and by the risen Christ. Despair not, for Jesus is alive. In these two appearances before his disciples, three times Jesus says, Peace to you. What is this peace? As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. It is the Father's approval of you and me in Jesus. Also, after his resurrection, Jesus says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to keep all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all the days until the consummation of the age. And breathing on the disciples, Jesus says, Receive the Holy Spirit, the holy breath of God. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This peace to you and me, this peace to his whole church, his people everywhere, 
is his abiding presence through his means of grace. Catechesis, the teaching of his word, passing along the faith of Christ. Holy baptism, the washing of water and the word in which the triune God claims you as his own and comes to dwell in you. Holy baptism, holy absolution, excuse me. Holy absolution, the living, life-giving, sin-forgiving breath of God through the mouth of your pastor, carrying the word of the Lord. And that word, that breath, that all Christians may speak to one another even when the sins confessed seem too big, too shameful, too much to be forgiven. Don't hold on to the sin and shame. Christ died and rose to take them from you. So why has this pandemic happened? What is God doing with our world for this to happen? Asks James Kushner executive editor of Touchstone magazine. Yes, most of us are asking the same or similar questions. Well, many of us. Well, many Christians are asking. Krishner also asks, or do we take the line of deists and say God has nothing to do with any of this, nothing whatsoever? One state governor asserted, we flattened the curve. God had nothing to do with it. We did it. Is he bold or is he foolish in such boasting? Holding fast to the truth, Kushner adds, we know for certain that God knows and that somehow all things find their way to his purposes. If you read and believe the prophets, you cannot miss the revelation that God sees and punishes and saves nations. Bad things happen, and through them, people repent or die. Since I have no gift of prophecy, I can only state the obvious. There are many things about the world today that are deeply offensive, beginning with the innocent blood of millions of unborn children on the land of the richest nation ever to exist on earth. Something another governor has called a life-sustaining procedure? And there are also our own manifold sins. Repentance is never out of order. Among the many responses and the advice of experts, I find few references to seeking the mercy of God in prayer. Have we, the people of God in Christ, sought his mercy earnestly, faithfully, relentlessly in prayer? I go back to those words. Repentance is never out of order. A week earlier, Mr. Kushner observed, perhaps this troubling season of closed churches and diminished services may help us remember things that we have either forgotten or took so much for granted that we've lost sight of them or allow them to be crowded out by the affluence and technologies of the modern world. Our homes are to be little churches, and now more than ever, we are forced to put this idea into practice as an expression of our living faith in the Lord Jesus. And has he not promised us? For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. And his spirit and his father and the angels too are with us. Though we feel like we're living the words of St. Peter from his, his, the epistle, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. Let us never forget that right before those words he says, in this you rejoice that we by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. The purpose of these trials, the apostle reminds us, is so that the tested genuineness of your faith 
more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, and though you do not now see him, blessed are you who have not seen and have believed. Thomas saw, and as a new creation in Christ, confessed Jesus as no one had ever confessed him before. And Thomas confessed, even unto death. According to tradition, Thomas went to India, where he built churches and was martyred by being run through with a spear. Hence the stained glass window here with the carpenter's square and spear for St. Thomas the Apostle. Baptized into Christ's death and resurrection, you have had your own eighth day. You are a new creation in Christ, an heir of a sure inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. You are blessed to continue that confession and by that confession to keep building the church and to confess with full voice as surely as Thomas did, my Lord and my God. And so bless your fellow believers and a dying world around you. How long? For as long as he lends you his breath and spirit. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Alleluia! And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds by his spirit in Christ Jesus. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We sing the prayer hymn.
of mercy. Keep us from the doubts and fears that cripple us and prevent us from knowing the fullness of your saving peace and gracious presence. Teach us to trust in your word and to believe with all our heart, mind, body, and soul, and strength in Jesus Christ, crucified for our sins and raised for our justification. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of grace, bestow upon your church, your spirit, and all the gifts that come down from on high. Grant to us faithful pastors who will preach faithfully and ears to hear your word proclaimed. Give us boldness in our witness before the world and courage to speak your name without fear. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of power, give courage and strength to our brothers and sisters persecuted for the faith and comfort the families of the martyrs. Keep your church from following the winds of change and make her steadfast in the doctrine of the apostles and the faith once delivered to the saints. Help us to admonish those who have fallen away with your word and to restore with gentleness those who have wandered from the truth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of might, counsel the nations and those who govern in the paths of peace, liberty, and justice. Bless us with wise, faithful, and just public servants who will protect the sanctity of life and defend us against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Make us wise and discerning citizens who use the gift of liberty for noble purpose. In your mercy, bring us through the current pandemic and grant that lives and work disrupted may soon be restored, recognizing that our right and proper vocations and labors and the dignity therein are gifts from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Guide us so that in our neighborhoods and communities we may manifest the love of Christ as well as his strength. Deliver us from all that would threaten our homes and families. Defend them, uh, defend from every danger to body and soul our medical personnel, the members of our armed forces, law enforcement, firefighters, and disaster relief workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless us with the good gifts of the earth, with the fruits of our honest labors, and with kind and generous hearts. Accept the offerings we bring as tokens of our gratitude and thanksgiving. Open our eyes and hearts to the needs of the poor, that we may serve them in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of comfort, give your aid and relief to Bonnie LaBelle, Rob Kaler, Craig Hill, Clayton Seals, Jerry Williams, Dave Heimsoff, Pastor Eugene Stowes, Miriam Stowes, Donna Holston, Diane Harries, Sandy Rose, Bill Taylor, Edgar Dreyer, Chris Littell, Max DeWeese, Shannon Lewis's mother-in-law, Virginia, and all the ill, the injured, the convalescing, and all who are afflicted with depression, addiction, and mental illness. Heal and sustain them according to your gracious will and preserve them in faith to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of hope, comfort of all who mourn, including the families of those killed in the tornadoes in the south. Point them to the promise of the resurrection and the gift of everlasting life to all who depart this life in the faith of Christ. Deliver us from the distraction of things that matter not, that we may focus on the needful things of your word and sacraments, and so be found faithful when our Lord returns in his glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O blessed God and Lord, hear the prayers of your people and teach us to trust in your will to answer our prayers with all that is needful and beneficial, both for us and for all for whom we have prayed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Thanks be to God that he continues to provide for the support of his kingdom's work here and throughout the world. And thank you for your faithfulness in giving your offerings. We sing the offertory hymn. 482, this joyful Easter time.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ have overcome the world and the prince of this world, create in us by your Holy Spirit true faith in your Son and through faith newness of life, that in the power of your might we also may overcome the world and at all times have in ourselves the witness of your grace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Alleluia.